Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 142. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very special guest in the building, a reoccurring guest in the building. It's been a minute, though, so reintroduce yourself to the audience. Hey, guys, how you doing? My name is Barbie, and I'm from the Let Me Touch You podcast. Thank you for having me once again. It's always a pleasure. International hype, as as it is. International hype, though, not just a hashtag. It is a way of life, so let them know where you are coming in from. From Bronx, New York. Yes, BX. Although y'all know we are not feeling people from New York at the current Why? moment after the playoff situation. Why? Uh, we it's will, okay. Because the, the Knicks, we're not feeling y'all right I know. now. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we gonna uh, we gonna look over that to get this work done. So episode one forty two, Barb. Thanks for coming back. We appreciate you coming on. Appreciate everybody for hitting the button. Now this one is for you because this is. I always tell people I pay attention to my guests. Me and you had a conversation about a specific book. So I go into it and I say, hmm, this is one she'll like. And this is a touchback that I think that was episode 88, I think, was the last time you was on. So it's been a minute because this is 142. (laughs) What is effective communication? All right. To me, effective communication is listening, listening to actually listen, not listening to respond actually taking in being open-minded to whatever your partner is telling you and even if sometimes when your partner is telling you something you might not register it automatically that that second if you need some time let them know you know what I need some time to think about whatever you said come back to it and actually taking your time to think about your response not just responding to have a response you understand that that's have that's having an actual conversation. Uh, if I don't have a preconceived thought and just say this is the answer I'm giving, regardless to what you say, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, that's a conversation. Something that you just said though, very very important, very hard to do for people. Admit that you were wrong. Admit that you didn't, or you weren't prepared to give an answer. Just because somebody asks you a specific question doesn't mean that you just blurt out any answer. If yeah. you haven't thought about it and know like I I understand the question but I don't understand the way that I want to answer this so I don't want to just say nothing to make myself even look dumb sound dumb because no matter how much we love each other and our relationship situations or parent situation and with your child once you say something it's said and yep. we can't put that toothpaste back in the tube that ketchup ain't going back in the bottle like it's you true said it. so you need to carefully examine what you about to say before you say it mm-hmm. uh so my answer for this though my bags that was just you know going off what you said uh my answer would definitely be listening listening is the most important thing that you could ever do because if you listen to listening and watching somebody you they will give you all the information that you need your body chemistry your mannerisms your facials all of that will tell you things that you need to know about this person. I can tell you yes and have the look of hell no on my face the whole time. Yeah. But if you ain't listening, ain't paying attention and ain't uh, effectively communi- or effectively listening, which is mm-hmm. a part of communication, is listening. Listening mm-hmm. is a part of communication. Uh, if you're not doing that, then you won't be picking up on the signs. That's how people will be like, how was y'all together for 20 years and then y'all just got divorced because this person wasn't happy the whole goddamn time. Yeah. <laughs> Attention to the clues. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, w- I would say though, uh, in order for you to effectively communicate, though, you got to be honest with people. Uh, also, because a lot of people will come up with a representative. In the beginning, we both lying. We're both just yeah. we're both doing the dance of like, okay, she likes this, or she likes that, so I don't really want to step on his toes or her toes, and. I don't want to offend you so quick with some of the views and opinions that I might have. So we might just dance around those topics or I might not just be the hell honest with you, which is a bad thing for real, for real. It's kind of a, it's kind of the way the game go where you kind of got to play the game of like, let's try to see if we got something here 
but you also got to be still true to yourself and who you are because this person could be like, I don't know, they like <laughs> they like something that you're totally against. And if you don't effectively communicate it instantly, yo, every time like you be touching my ear, that's something that really bothers me. Yeah. Please don't do it again. Like, just because you're old that girl like that don't mean you're do new girl. That like more, <laughs> though. Like what you see like? how usually in the beginning the whole games are being played. You bring up the representative. You're trying to be everything that that person tells you they don't like. I think that we should stop doing that and actually be straightforward with what we want, what we don't want. That way, you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting the other person's time. So having those older, hard older, conversations. The older you the get, the older you get, the more blunt you get about those situations. Now, of course, everybody gonna listen to this and say, "I'd say whatever I want." I tell people, "You're lying." We get it. It's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. because there's a certain amount of finesse that you're going to put into this situation to see if there's something there but you shouldn't be compromising yourself just to talk to whoever this individual is like if you're a I don't even know like I'm trying to think of just something like a, a basic example like okay if you're a I go to church every week Christian and you're a I go to Juma every week Muslim then y'all probably not saying that you couldn't but y'all probably need to talk about that from the beginning so that we don't yeah. get six years down the road and go like, we still arguing about Christmas gifts and how you fasting. <laughs> like, no, so yeah, I agree. Some of those things, yeah, you need to like bring them up and let's just get it on the table and address it now. And some of those things we need to gradually ease into. But again, it's all about your communication. Like you said, those hard conversations, you got to have those conversations before you just jump in both feet in the relationship now y'all done signed the lease together and y'all broke up and now y'all still living here and now he got a joint in the room and you got a nigga on the couch and now we got a whole situation <laughs> true like for example the person that i'm dealing with now right i remember i still remember the first date we were in his car and we're having you no know, simple conversations and it might sound crazy to some but i and i did look at him but i respected his honesty and it showed me exactly that he knew what he wanted like you know so we're talking and he was like so how's your sex drive i looked at him like Nick, huh? this is the first date like how are you already bringing up how's my <laughs> sex drive and i was like um it's fine he was like okay and we kept going but like he would ask me those difficult com um questions very early on and it made me comfortable to ask and do the same and eight months in, like, our communication is fucking amazing. There's not so, one thing that goes by that if it's bothering us, we won't mention, like, any little thing. We have never had an argument. So effective communication from the very beginning, I think, is the key to everything. I thought you two, two things about what you just said. One, when you mentioned him, you started, you had a little smile. You gave a smirk. So for those watching the video on the E-Block <laughs> Radio Network, every Monday at 2 o'clock, you will see the light smile that you just gave, Barb. I don't know if you peeped it. I but can I make did. it us. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't me. That was him. As soon as you said, ah. we were in the car, you, look, you looked up <laughs> to slightly to the right you know what I'm saying, and threw a smart smirk. I don't know if anybody else peeped it, but I did. Um, so shot, uh, make sure when you're sending this episode, Hype only accepts five stars now. And he peeped what you did to us. Oh, copy. God. <laughs> <laughs> and the important thing that you said there, like I said, don't compromise who you are. Like, he's like, if I got a high sex drive, you shouldn't get with a person with a low sex drive before we even go any further into the situation. He brought it up, but he didn't harp on the situation and make it a 45 minute conversation. Yes. Which is. Like I said, the older we get, the more we just get like, look, man, I ain't got eight months or eight years to be <laughs> playing around with you in this situation. Because if this ain't it, then this ain't it. And that's cool. I can get on to the next person. He brought it up just to let you know, that, look, this is where I'm at with it. And mm -hmm. if you're not here, then it's cool. But that's where I'm at. So shouts out to him. Kudos to him for, yeah. again, he effectively communicated, though, like, yo, look. This is what it is that I like. Now, we ain't got to, again, because it's the first date, first time we just sitting here. We don't got to overly analyze the situation, but just put it out there to let you know that it's here. But you can't get in now for those who are listening. Like I said, everybody's going to say, I say everything I want to say. Copy, you're the, you're the perfect one. <laughs> Nobody needs to hear the, for, the list of 45 things that you must have and that you love and like on the first date. 
Like, yeah. You can slowly chip through that list, but you can't give me this full clip like, so then it got to be like this. And then you know, on Wednesdays, I like uh, mushrooms on my steak. Like, can't do all that. <laughs> yeah, it has to flow. Like, as things are, and I don't remember exactly what we were talking about. Like, so it wasn't like a random, he stopped mid conversation to ask me that. I'm sure it had to do with something, you know, within that spectrum. And the way he asked it and just kept going with the conversation, it was cool. Like you said, he didn't dwell on it. So, this is something I always tell people like, me and my wife uh, have been talking 18 years. We've had three arguments in those 18 years. It took us to like year 12 or 11 to have the first argument. So somebody's going to tell you, oh, y'all, y'all got to have an argument or some conflict. You don't. That's stupid. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> like, arguments are not a part of effective communication. Disagreements are perfectly fine because we're two different people. We mm -hmm. were raised differently. We look at things differently. The, our walk to get here was differently. So that's cool. Arguments and disagreements are, <clears throat> excuse me, two totally different things. But me and my wife had the hard, difficult conversations about religion kids uh where you want to live how you want to live what do you like what do you expect we had all those conversations before she became my wife so that mm -hmm. once we got there it wasn't uh i don't know well, what you mean you hanging this over here or like you leaving the ketchup in the refrigerator like that's not what we're doing <laughs> ketchup goes in the cabinet <laughs> at the refrigerator <laughs> cabinet people cabinet yeah, yeah like but uh -huh. if y'all didn't even something as small as that if you live with this it can ruin your whole damn day every time you go in and can. it's like peanut butter is in here again. Like yeah. <laughs> she's just gonna keep doing this. Like. Mm -hmm. And with um with him, like you said, it's mainly disagreements and everything is said respectfully. Some people they get upset about something that you do and they don't like and they want to come at you like if they're your parent. Speak to that person with the same respect that you want to be spoken with. And you discuss it like, listen, whatever you did last night, I didn't like the way you responded to this. I didn't like the way you responded. Little things like that. And don't let time pass by because the more time you let go by with something that bothers you, it's like the buildup gets crazy. So when you finally do mention it, like you're on a thousand and there's no going back. Address right. it right then and there. <laughs> the problem with buildup when you don't effectively communicate is you have now had this conversation in your head for the two weeks that you've been mad about this. Yeah. I completely forgot about this <laughs> or you completely forgot about this, but I've been talking about this to myself for two weeks. So now when you bring it up to the person and you're instantly on 10 about it, they don't understand because they like, well, how did we get here about, I was getting the kids and you wasn't type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. how did we get here already? And we just start talking about this and it's because you didn't say from the beginning, yo, this was a problem or you didn't, you didn't effectively communicate. Yeah. That, yo, I didn't like this. I don't like that. Like the first time something happens that you don't like, you need to just go, Hey, you know, look, so when you like, that's not a thing that we are doing, like, mm -hmm. This is a boundary for me, and we cannot cross through. We can't go through this line. This is not one that I'm looking to compromise on. Mm -hmm. That's fine, but you got to say that when it happens. You can't come back two months later, two weeks later, because again, like I said, you've had that conversation and you've been thinking about this, and this is it's this big now with you when it's this big to the other person because they don't even remember it. Yeah, and then once you have that conversation and y'all both walk away from it with an understanding. Two months later, when y'all have another disagreement, don't bring it right back up because it makes no oh, yeah. sense. You can't keep score in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, yeah. keeping score, then like something's wrong with that situation. You can't be mm -hmm. like, well, remember the time I did because I did this, this, and this. And you ain't never. That's now unless it's just a hundred percent to nothing. Unless this nigga's just always sitting in the house, or she's just always sitting in the house, and you're the one that's always doing everything. That's not keeping score. That's just the facts. But mm -hmm. if we nitpicking about who's doing what, then we have issues there. Yeah. All right. Now, let's switch up the show now. We're going to get to the Get to Know segment, which is sponsored by Custom Hustle. That is at Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, custom jackets, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and soccer jerseys. We have four versions of the Snakes, the CH1s, 2s, 3s, 4s. We have 
the barber capes, we have the collared shirts, we got the shorts, we got the sweatsuits. All these things are available in any color that you can think of. Um, you get with me at Custom Hustle World on Twitter, Custom Hustle, Custom Hustle Worlds on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, and put your orders in. Uh, you know, let me know what you need. We customize and all of that. Like some people who have a hoodie and haven't sent me a picture for a while. No, I don't By use the way, sweatsuits are super comfy, people. I have it. It's my favorite sweatsuit, and I'm going to take a picture. Oh, copy that. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> get to know. Let's go with get to know. What stops you? What stops me from yes. anything in general? Just what um, is it that's all, what's the obstacle that's always in the way? Myself, my brain. Like, I'm my worst enemy. Sometimes I can want to do something and I'm in my head thinking if I do it this way, it'll be better. If I do it that way, it'll be better. I'm like my worst critic. So if anything stops me from doing something, it's going to be me. The best TV show of all time is? Friends. Don't judge me. Why, Why is Friends your answer? I love Friends. I can watch it every day and laugh like if I've seen the episode for the first time every day. I see my I see myself in who? In my daughter. My daughter is my twin, meaning me. And for those of you who are watching, y'all probably saw me do that because she came and she wanted to start talking to me while we were recording. So I apologize for that. What version of yourself would you say your daughter is? She is me when I was in my my teenage years, like 16, around there. Copy that. You smile when you said 16. So when you think of 16, it was another, one, like of the... side, it was another one of them side <laughs> smirks that you gave when you said 16. So now we need to know. Those are like the most fun, about... best years of my life. Copy. When you think of 16, you think these was like the best years. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Care she lives freak. her life that way. Carefree, yes. Exactly. Copy that. Okay, lastly, I want to get to know, what is your favorite thing about hype? <laughs> Everything. You're fucking dope as hell. Like, you're super supportive. You're a hard worker. With everything that you have on your plate and the way you get things done, whoever's not motivated by everything you do, there's something wrong with them. You make shit that. happen. You make shit happen. See, some time. people be, some people be, uh, you know, some people look at these things as arrogance or like, damn, you always asking people what they think about you. It's like, you want to smell those flowers while you can. Yes, okay? you deserve it. And I start off every live show by saying, can I speak out loud? Can I tell myself I'm proud? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Thank you for those kind words, Barb. Now, the last segment of the show we do is uh, what do we need to know? Sponsored by H2H Cleaning. It is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. You need your clean outs, your cleanups, uh, anything around. You need some construction. You need some remodeling. If you need it, flooring, you need some carpeting, get at me. We can make all of that happen. We will slide out to the Bronx if you make it worth my while, and we'll make it happen out there. Just let really? us know. Because we're I'm here happy. to help. So just let us know how can we help. <laughs> at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only, though. Now, time for you to tell us what do we need to know. Like, the shirt that we are have on right here. If you could just back up <laughs> just a taste. I'm back up and pull the show down. us the logo. So I'm gonna assume that there's something we need to know about the shirts. I don't want to comment on the shirt. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, situation we've sent him the episode. We don't need any smoke, but we would like to know. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this shirt I designed it um about a year and a half ago. For those of you who can't read it, um, it says hop off my clip, ma. So there was this podcaster that created some fake beef with me. I don't do beef. I don't do social wow. media beef. <laughs> I don't do all that stuff. But every time she was creating a show on somebody's show, she was mentioning me. So one time I went on the live, I just got on real fast and I told her hop off my clip, ma. And it became a thing. So I had to put it on the shirt. Hop off my clip, ma. You know, I res- clip. I respect you not saying get off my dick because that's one thing I have absolutely always hated was girls who said that it's like it's something about the plumbing in this situation yeah. that doesn't add up. So, uh, shouts out to you for not saying that. Yeah, <laughs> off the clip. 
All right, so now tell us though what we need to know. This is the segment where the floor is yours. You let us know what it is that we need to know. Okay, right now I'm on a break. I've been on a break almost maybe a year with my podcast. Life has been life and so I've been Shout out to my man Nutmeg Nine, Big Me from the Life Be Life and Podcast. Every time people say that, we gotta throw that plug out there for my phone. Yes. <laughs> but for now, you can catch me every other Friday, myself with Styles from the Brunch Hour Podcast and Haiti from the Ladies Pitch Podcast. We all collaborated together and created a page called the NYC Home Team Pods. And I'm there every other Friday. We go live and we highlight a podcaster, which we need to have you on. We need to schedule that for you. So whatever podcast that we have on, the topics are based on your episodes. So any podcasters out there who are watching, listening, make sure you follow us. We Whoever follows us, we look at your work and we schedule a day to have you on and we just drink, talk have fun and enjoy our Friday nights and make sure that they follow you. Where is it that they would need to follow you so that they can on... see if they could collab with you on these situations? Yes. Yes. You can follow me on IG at let underscore me underscore touch underscore Y O U. And then the NYC home team pods on IG. What's, as the, well. N- oh, what's the NYC home team? What's the, what's the Instagram official for the folks? NYC we'll have it in the, we'll have it in the bio, but we'd like to, it's straight NYC home team pods. Copy that because you know some that, I made that stuff. one easier. Yeah. You know, you know <laughs> spelling is challenging for some people. All right. Now anything else that we need to know is uh you find us at a tournament near you? Anything else you say? No, nothing. Right now I'm just, you know, chilling and enjoying the Friday nights. AAU schedules are crazy. Once AAU schedules are over and done with, I'll be back before. The year is up, what? I promise that. Once the AAU schedule is over and done with, we're going to get that live show together. Yes, we definitely That's are. That's what we're going to do, okay? So I'm mm-hmm. throwing that out there to you. We're going to get that live show together. But once you get the AAU schedule slowed down and you have enough time to plan, put it together, those things are beautiful. When you look out at a crowd of people who showed up here for you, it, yeah, gives, you a certain, it gives you a certain, like, damn, I don't care if it's six people there. That's six people who paid money to come see whatever it is that you're about to talk about. And that's a great feeling is what I can tell you from a live show veteran like myself, paid talent like myself. I'm saying, how else are live shows? We'll be back soon. We're working on a venue and a location. Shouts out to my folks at the barn. Please still slide over to the barn's Instagram page at the barn West Philly and hit that link in that bio. They can still use any uh, donations that you would like to make. That was the home of all of the Hot Hustle live shows so far. They had a tragic fire at the building. So, you know, if everybody, you know, hit that link, support them, and donate some bread. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you for coming on. This is episode 142 of the Hot Hustle podcast with Hype, and we are out. I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.